Welcome to Location, Cabrini College's weekly news program. I'm Bethany Biggenhill. And I'm Valerie Ruiz. Here's your news now. Cabrini's annual Fall Involvement Fair was held Wednesday, September 5th to encourage students to join college activities. Our own Jenna Rose DiGiacomo was there and has a report. Hi guys, this is Jenna Rose Giacomo reporting for location on site outside of Grace Hall. Just inside, the involvement fair has just begun and students of the class of 2016 and upperclassmen will be visiting various organizations and clubs to see if they would like to join them this semester. Um, coming into college, you really don't know that many people and you really want to meet new people and, and get to know who you're going to college with. So uh, it's definitely a good opportunity to come and meet those people and uh, it's a lot of fun and it's good to have a break from school and work. We're basically dispelling ignorance one person at a time. Um, we are basically advocating for the African American culture, trying to change the stigma and like mold it into a different, more positive aspect. Well, I joined photography club, um, French club and basketball intramural. I heard from a lot of people that different activities and opportunities were here so I can. During the involvement fair, the Philadelphia Zoo came to Cabrini. Students were amazed and intrigued by the showcase. There were various animals on display, including a lizard and an owl. For location, I'm Jenna Rosa Giacomo, now back to the studio. On Saturday, September 8th, Bryn Mawr inducted two more institutions into the Bryn Mawr 100, followed by the grand reopening of the Lettington Library. Let's take a closer look. So the Bryn Mawr 100 today is, uh, they're a group of institutions that are over 100 years old in Bryn Mawr. There are 19 of them, and those 19 were recognized at our first Bryn Mawr 100 day, which was a year ago. Today we welcome two new members to the Bryn Mawr 100, which is Bryn Mawr Boy Scout Troop 19, they're 100 years old this year, and Bryn Mawr Gospel Hall is 100 years old this year. There are schools, there are churches, there are businesses, uh, that, and there are the hospital and the train station and the post office are all 100, over 100 years old. And Bryn Mawr has a remarkable number of them, so we want to celebrate and recognize and help promote those institutions that are over 100 years old. September 8, 2012 is also the grand reopening of Ludington Library. Ludington Library is the largest library in Lower Marion, the largest library in Montgomery County, and it has been renovated and expanded, and it is a remarkable building with great open space, cozy space, a children's, an expanded children's area, a beautiful reading porch, and really is a, uh, a library that attracts a lot of people. Over a thousand people a day come through Ludington Library, and it brings people into our community, and it really is a community space and a valuable asset in Lower Mary. We're here at the Bryn Mawr Farmer's Market lot across from Ludington Library. And the Farmer's Market is here every Saturday during the season from 9 until 1. Today we've got entertainment and history tours, and really it's a great day in Bryn Mawr, a memorable day, and one that is highlighted by the opening of Ludington and by the Bryn Mawr Farmer's Market. 100 years old, but I don't think we really appreciated the history of the troop until they contacted us. Hey, we're really happy to be part of Bryn Mawr Day, so um, this is our first time here, of course. We were inducted today, and what we're doing is volunteering, and this is something the scouts are doing um, routinely is providing community service. So we were here early this morning to help set up tables. The boys are distributing the newspapers that the Mainline Times provided. And then today we'll help clean up here this afternoon. One, two, three. I'd like to now proudly announce that Ludington Library is reopened to the public for business. And I welcome all of you to explore the library throughout the day today and in the coming future. We will also be celebrating Bryn Mawr's 100th day in a few moments here at this location. For all you coffee drinkers out there, recent studies have shown that coffee is actually very beneficial to your health. 
Other than boosting your energy, coffee has been shown to fight a number of illnesses, including cancer and heart disease. Coffee also has hundreds of pain-relieving compounds and even fights tooth decaying bacteria in the mouth. Coffee is even good to drink before working out as it reduces exercise-induced muscle pain and improves stamina. Along with physical benefits, it also enhances alertness, boosts learning abilities, and elevates your mood. So whether you're on your way to the gym, class, or even work, don't feel guilty grabbing a cup. Interested in seeing hundreds of colorful scarecrow creations while enjoying a weekend of fun? On September 15th and 16th, Peddler's Village in Bucks County will be kicking off its Fall Festival. Enjoy a weekend of pumpkin pie eating contests, pumpkin designs, and viewing hundreds of scarecrow creations. That was your trip around the block. Now here's Rob with sports. In Phillies news, they currently sit 17 games back in the NL East and only four back in the wild card following a 9-7 win on Tuesday night against the Miami Marlins. They will travel to Houston and New York for a six-game road trip against the Astros and Mets respectively, which begins on Thursday and ends in the middle of next week. The Eagles opened their season with a 17-16 win over the Cleveland Browns this past Sunday. Michael Vick completed 29-56 passes for 317 yards, but threw four interceptions. The Birds' next challenge is their home opener this Sunday against the Ravens. In NHL news, the League and Players Association will have until 11.59 p.m. on Saturday to reach a new collective bargaining agreement. If they fail to reach an agreement, the owners will lock the players out for the third time in 18 years. In Cabrini Sports, the men's soccer team hosted the Eagle Road Classic this past weekend, tying Wesley College 1-1 on Saturday and beating NYU Polytechnic 3-0 on Saturday. The win is Coach Rod Dallas's first career win and brings the Caps to 1-3-1 on the season. The women's soccer team recorded their first win with a 1-0 victory over Penn State Abington with freshman Megan Martin recording the lone Cavs goal. The field hockey team currently sits at 0-4 on the season after losing 2-0 to Gettysburg College on Saturday. The volleyball team went 3-1 at this weekend's Ithaca College tournament, beating St. John Fisher College, Widener University, and CSAC rival Baptist Bible College while losing to Union College. Up next for the team is a rematch against Widener this Thursday at the Nerney Fieldhouse at 7 p.m. Men's and women's cross country plays 8th and 13th respectively at the Highlander Invitational. This week's location, Athlete of the Week goes to freshman Boomer Stagelman, whose two assists helped lead the men's soccer team to their first win of the season this past Saturday. That's all I got for this week in sports. Be sure to tune in next week as I have more results of Cavalier Athletics, as well as updates on the Eagles home opener, the Phillies playoff hopes, and the NHL labor situation. Also keep an eye on the Location YouTube channel as I will have full highlights of Cabrini Night of the Phillies. Now back to Val. Election Day is quickly approaching. The presidential election will be held on November 6th this year. Both parties had their political conventions during the past several weeks when candidates formally accepted their party's nominations. Polls have been showing a tight race between Republican candidate Mitt Romney and Democrat President Barack Obama. In Pennsylvania, registering to vote has become an important issue for students, especially with the state's new voter ID laws, which makes getting a photo identification card a requirement to vote in November. According to Pennsylvania's Bureau of Commission Elections and Legislation, students can use their student college IDs as long as it has an expiration date and photo identification. A scene out of The Wizard of Oz swept into Queens and Brooklyn, New York this past weekend as a tornado swept through the city. Winds increased to 70 miles per hour in Queens. A second tornado hit Brooklyn with winds of 100 miles per hour. Tornado warnings were in effect for the rest of the day. These two twin tornadoes were not the first to hit the Big Apple. In 2010, three tornadoes struck across the city causing severe damage. The tornadoes caused power outages and damaged vehicles and buildings. No one was injured or hurt due to the more recent storms. In Philadelphia, a false flight threat occurred when one gentleman was caught, accused of placing a phony call to police with regards of a passenger having liquid explosives on their person. The passenger with suspected liquids was found and detained by police, but no explosives were found. The motive of the caller was to inflict harm on the passenger's ex-girlfriend due to a photo that the passenger had leaked on Facebook. The caller was arrested and could face up to 10 years in prison. That was your news across the nation. Now here's Christine with your entertainment update. Hi guys, I'm Christine with your weekly entertainment update. The 2012 MTV Video Music Awards have come and gone. Demi Lovato wowed the outdoor audience with a performance of Give Your Heart a Break before accepting the Moon Man for Best Video with a Message. Host Kevin Hart quickly took stage pointing out the biggest celebrity mistakes of the year. 
Drake was one of the many winners of the night accepting the Best Hip Hop Video Award. And finally, Wiz Khalifa announced he would be a proud daddy to Amber Rose's growing baby bump. Rumors are buzzing about Blake Lively and Ryan Reynolds' wedding. Apparently, the Green Lantern co-star said I do this weekend at Boone Hall Plantation in Mount Pleasant, just outside of Charleston. A source tells E! News that the newlyweds are still in South Carolina and have yet to embark on a honeymoon, but plan to do so later this week. Simon Cowell has good news for American Idol fans who don't want to see one of their biggest judges hit the road. Cowell tweeted that Randy Jackson will stick around for the Fox talent show for another season. Late last month, news broke that Jackson was expected to leave the judges' panel and move on to a mentoring-like role, but now appears he will stay put in his chair. Fox, for now, is staying quiet until an official announcement is made later this week. That's all I have for now. Now back to Bethany. The British press was dominated this week by stories about the shooting deaths of a British-Iraqi couple during a camping vacation in France. A French cyclist, who police think may have stumbled on the murders in progress, was also killed. The couple's two daughters survived the murders. Police hope to get information from their four-year-old daughter who was uninjured and their seven-year-old who was shot in the head. A volcano erupted in San Cristobal, Nicaragua, forcing the evacuation of nearby towns. The volcano is the highest mountain in Nicaragua and has been active for almost 600 years. Nicaragua has been preparing for a seismic event since a strong earthquake shook a neighboring Costa Rica last week. Civilians continue to die in the Syrian uprising, which has been going on for more than a year. This past week, a kindergarten class was bombed, leaving many young students and teachers injured. The United Nations keep trying to broker a peace agreement between the government of Syrian President Bashar al-Assad and insurgents trying to overthrow him. Neighboring countries, Turkey, Saudi Arabia, Iran, and Egypt are trying to find a solution. The United Nations estimate that more than 18,000 Syrian people have been killed. Thanks for staying tuned in with us. For Location Weekly News, I'm Bethany Bigenhill. And I'm Valerie Ruiz. Enjoy the rest of your week, Cabrini.